Greetings, fellow democracy enjoyers. It's me, the original Evan, who in no way, shape, or form was execute I mean, re-educated, because of traitorous beliefs. If you suggest otherwise, it might be considered treason. That's the spirit, divers. No questioning anything. Why would you, when there's a war to fight? Speaking of war, the tides of this conflict have shifted, and not necessarily in our favor. Somehow, the godless Terminids and Automatons have neutered our precious stratagems and forced us to find alternative methods of crushing exoskeletons and spilling oil. No, in all seriousness, a patch for Helldivers 2 was released recently, and it changed a whole bunch of stuff. On top of that, a really exciting new gameplay element is coming to the game. And the way in which Arrowhead have decided to roll it out is nothing short of genius. That's right. I'm talking about the mechs, which have already appeared in lobbies within the game. In this video, I'm going to discuss the campaign to liberate Tian Quan, the source of the community's latest toy, and how the player base worked together for rewards in such a good idea. I'll also cover the new meta, explain why some options aren't quite as useful anymore, or in the railgun's case, completely overpowered, while exploring the potential alternatives that you might want to be using now that things have changed a bit. So without further ado, let's get right into it. This is how the Helldivers community unlocked mechs and guaranteed swifter victories on all fronts of the Galactic War. Malevolent Creek. We all heard what happened in that dark corner of the galaxy. Thousands upon thousands of our brothers and sisters cut down by the vile automaton menace. They say some still hold the line, refusing to give up hope that one day we'll come back for them. And that's why we did what we did in Tian Quan. Did we let the fall of Malevolent break us? Did we give in to fear? No! The legacy of the immortal Creek Crawlers lives on. Once the orders came in, not one bot in the galaxy could stop us from taking back what was rightfully ours. We came, we saw, we spilled oil. And I speak for all of us when I say that I'd do it all over again. We did it for Super Earth. We did it for managed democracy. But most of all, we did it for those of us who were cut down before the dawn could break. We're coming back for you, heroes. You might be asking why my mic sounds different, and that's because I'm on family leave right now. I'm with my mom for something pretty important. Hope you guys understand, and hopefully the mic isn't too bad. Enjoy. In 2024, I'm trying to make more variety content for both of my channels. Many of you who have already subscribed for a while know me for my Destiny content, and rest assured, I'm going to keep covering everything related to our favorite space magic looter shooter. But this year, we're going to delve more into different games and their communities, such as the great stories that make Helldivers 2 such a great game to play. Helldivers across the galaxy have been absolutely demolishing automatons and annihilating terminids with ease so far. Well, ease is a strong word but the community has been putting in a lot of work into the noble task of preserving our glorious way of life. Every so often though, there comes a time where the community needs to unite and come together to take on a daunting task. This was the case when the Helldivers 2 player base was ordered to liberate the planet of Tian Quan by high command. But Evan, what is Tian Quan? And why should I care about these major orders that I've been getting in game? Patience, democracy spreader. All shall be revealed. Essentially, most live service games introduce new content by just patching it in, right? We've all seen the ways in which Bungie has handled this with Destiny 2, and it's pretty likely that they'll be doing the same thing with Marathon. There's nothing wrong with it. It still gets players hyped, and at the end of the day, it's new content. However, one, Arrowhead, the devs behind Helldivers 2, are giving us a taste of what might be the optimal strategy for live service content drops in the future. They've brought the mechs into the game in a really clever way. Instead of just having them randomly show up with a brand new patch, the Helldivers community recently received a major order from Super Earth Command, directing them to liberate a planet called Tian Quan, which has been taken over by filthy automaton scum. <clears throat> I mean the undemocratic warmongering automaton faction.
This was important for a big reason. Tian Quan is the source of major factories that produce the mechs. What this means is that the developers were telling the player base that if they wanted to liberate this planet, they would receive the mech suits in game as a reward for this endeavor. This is nothing short of genius. For starters, it allows the whole community to join the quest for the sweet, sweet mechs. Even missions on the lowest difficulty contribute towards the liberation of a planet. And so everyone, whether they were a fresh-faced level 5 cadet or a grizzled 1,000-yard stare possessing level 50 Skull Admiral, could work together to unlock this new piece of content. I love how all of the elements of the community have come together to take out the Automaton Menace and ultimately bolster our arsenal so that we can spill even more oil as we take on the trials of the Galactic War. Everyone across the player base put aside their differences, and in some cases, traitorous activities, to join the good fight and get those sweet, sweet mechs out on the field. What's more is that this perfectly sets up future community events. Given that we already know there is a lot more coming to Helldivers 2 over the course of the next few months, it's reasonable to assume that there will be more liberation campaigns like this one in the future. It doesn't take a genius to work out that a game like Helldivers 2, collective rewards for dedicated players will definitely keep up the player counts. I mean, only 21 hours after the order had been issued, there were over 120,000 Helldivers all fighting together to take on the Presence, which was about two-thirds of the active player base at the time. Their efforts were not unwarranted, too. Another stroke of genius by the Arrowhead team, specifically Joel, the Game Master, is that at the time of writing, mechs are available to use by the entire player base for free in missions. Soon, you'll be able to unlock the mech when you're level 25 or above, but for a short space of time, Everyone can call in these killing machines and use them to their heart's content. I think this is just such a clever decision from Arrowhead, as it would be a little bit of a letdown if people had spent so much time trying to liberate Tian Quan, only to find that the mech was locked behind higher levels. This way, the new stratagem is still something to chase, and yet everyone who was there for the liberation campaign can enjoy the fruits of their labor. There's something else which makes this victory taste even sweeter. We could have easily failed as a community to unlock the mechs in time, if we hadn't managed to liberate Tian Quan. We just wouldn't have been given the mechs for free if this didn't happen. We've already seen what happens when players fail to liberate or defend certain planets. We just don't succeed. This means that actually giving the bots hell and managing to expel them from Tian Quan makes the community's victory and subsequent reward feel well deserved. Personally, I'm excited to see the ways in which Arrowhead releases future content, as this is the first community event, and it was done very well. So the community came together and achieved a big task set out for them by Arrowhead, and everyone should be rejoicing, especially a group of gamers who are particularly dear to my heart, Titanfall lovers. Time to dry those tears, stretch out those thumbs, and dive into spilling some oil and crushing some chitin. Chitin? Chitin? Crushing some chitin. I don't know. Yes, I'm aware that Respawn are making a new game in the Titanfall universe that isn't Titanfall 3 for some inexplicable reason, but the next best thing has just launched in Helldivers 2. The indomitable mech is finally in the game. As I write this, Tien Quan has been liberated, and the shiny new toys that have come with its liberation should be available across the galaxy for all divers out there who need some inventive ways to spill oil and crush some bug guts. Of course, this wasn't the only piece of big news related to Helldivers 2 that came out recently. In case you missed it, on the 6th of March, there was a big patch to the game that addressed some of the more rampant stratagems and weapons available. Of course, the high-velocity elephant in the room is the railgun. And I'll just get it out of the way quickly. Yeah, it's been nerfed. But it's still pretty good if you use it right. There are other changes that need to be addressed, though. First of all, the breaker has been hit with a pretty significant nerf, to 13 from 15. I know what you're thinking, Evan. There's nothing compared to how they've gutted my precious armor deleter, but it's certainly something. You really feel those extra two rounds when there's a half a dozen stalkers in your face. That being said, the breaker is still strong if you want to use it. 
Although you might want to consider a couple of other toys that got a buff. The main one is the Punisher, which got a damage buff and a magazine buff. But it seems like the Slugger has also been affected by these changes. So maybe that was a stealth buff. Maybe this will get changed after the video releases. But all I can say now is that the Punisher and the Slugger both feel pretty darn good. So definitely give them a try. The Flamethrower also got a pretty good damage buff, and now it can take out Chargers quite effectively. So maybe give them a spin if you love the smell of Napalm in the morning. The other stratagems that's caught my eye is the Laser Cannon, which can now melt right through medium armor with ease. I was using it last night, and now it's pretty darn good. Speaking of the Railgun, yeah, it went into its safe mode. And it's not very good right now, but realistically, you should be using it in unsafe mode anyways. It's still pretty nuts against bigger targets, but it'll take a few more shots before you can turn a Hulk into a piece of junk. The 120mm and 380mm orbital barrages are much more effective now as well. As their spread has been decreased, meaning the area which they affect has a much smaller radius, but more damage. If your name is Gantz the Demon, this will obviously ruin your day. As before the patch, those barrages were perfect for killing your teammates, and not much else. Also, comments, I've been seeing a lot of you guys talk about how Gantz was innocent, so I'll be looking into that in the future. However, for the rest of you proud, upstanding Helldivers, maybe consider giving the orbital barrages a go in your next mission, but don't blame me if your accidentals still skyrocket. At this point, that'll be user error, thus not my fault. To cap off all these changes, the Energy Shield Backpack has had its cooldown increase by a significant amount, which honestly makes sense. It was really, really good before, and it's still good now, it's just not quite as OP. Just to finish off this patch section, I want to say that there's no use in complaining about changes to the meta in a live service game like Helldivers 2. Think about how it would be if the Railgun stayed OP as it had before this patch, and thus became the only thing that people used at all in the game. Yes, I get that it's a bit hard to break armor without it, but the orbital rail cannon strike exists. Besides, now that the mechs are in the game, who needs a puny railgun when you can literally reenact Pacific Rim with a Bile Titan? To sum it up, the introduction of mechs into the game was done in such a good way. The liberation of Tian Quan was a community event that everyone could take part in, and due to the fact that we could have easily failed, the reward of the mechs feels hard earned and well deserved. We know there will be more content in the future. A new war bond was announced recently, and it'll be fascinating to see the ways in which Arrowhead decides to introduce this new content into the game. As for the patch notes, yeah, I get it. It can be really annoying when something you really like, or that you loved, gets nerfed. But I think it's better for the health of the game when the railgun isn't quite as strong as it was before. On top of that, there are some other stratagems that are actually doing quite well after the patch. Maybe take a step out of your comfort zone and fry some bugs or zap some bots. You never know, you might fall in love with something new. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hmm.